You probably already have a hobby or something that you like to do for fun. But can your hobby actually make you money? Can you make a few hundreds or maybe even a few thousands of dollars every month by doing what you love? Well, here are three creative side hustle ideas that others are using to make money online. So let's dive in. I've always said that a hobby does not have to stay a hobby. You can still do what you love, yet find creative ways to monetize that skill. And that is exactly what many people are doing right now with painting. So if you have a knack for painting or drawing or even different kinds of art forms like calligraphy, you can absolutely monetize this skill. And I want to show you four different ways that you can do it. And I'll share my screen right away so I can give you examples of what other people are doing to make money online with this kind of skill. So obviously the first First way that you can monetize your talent is selling your art pieces on places like Etsy or Amazon Handmade. They are specialized in selling handmade products, things that you don't mass produce, but that you make one of a kind. So if we take a look at Etsy, you can see we have here the shop of somebody called Kathy. She has a lot of different kinds of paintings and she charges around $100 for each of them. All of them are very creative. All of them are very unique. She's obviously very talented. And as you can see, she's made 148 sales, which is not a bad deal for selling, you know, the product of your hobby, the product of something that you already enjoy doing on a platform. Here we have another shop that belongs to someone called Stefan based out of Germany. He has relatively bigger paintings and he charges a bit more for each of them, somewhere between 200 and 250 dollars. Some of them are even 300 dollars. And if we look, he's made already 346 sales, which is about 70,000 dollars selling his art pieces on Etsy. Now, remember that art is also a great way to focus and improve mindfulness. Many people, as well as many companies, are looking in this direction to find ways to relax and get their mental health in the right balance. So another great idea that you could consider is to host these in-person masterclasses where you bring a few dozen people together and you teach them your skill in person. And I want to give you an example of somebody that I know who is a master calligraphy artist and he specializes in Tibetan calligraphy. And as you can see, he hosts events where he teaches people a combination of calligraphy, but also mindfulness. So if we go here to learn more about the event, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. He hosts these small events with maybe 15, 20 people where he brings them together, he teaches them Tibetan calligraphy, which is an incredible skill and that focuses people and allows them to really improve their mindfulness. But also, as you can see on the other side of the room, there is a dedicated area for that kind of practice as well. So if that's something that you would be able to do, then definitely consider organizing this kind of small masterclasses as well. And you can see here underneath that he is charging right now 130 euro per person for one weekend participation and 220 euro per person for two weekend participation. And if you have 10 or 20 people, that means you can make $4,000 or euros easily in just two weekends. So it's not really a bad idea for you to consider. Now, if you want to take this to the next level, you can create an online course where you teach people how to do this, how to do modern calligraphy or bullet journaling, or how to paint flowers in watercolor or acrylic, or you name it, I'm pretty sure there are courses about this. The first and easiest way that you can do this is by leveraging platforms like Skillshare, like Udemy, like Domestica, because they are already bringing in the traffic. So you don't have to worry about getting leads and having people see your course. You can simply upload it there and then they will take care of the traffic and the leads. So people will purchase your course directly on that platform. So let's take a look. You see, we have people here who are selling courses about English calligraphy. And this lady has sold to 19,000 people people and lots of them are very, very pleased with the quality. There are people who do creative doodling and hand lettering for beginners type of courses. 
There are people who will teach you retro hand lettering and embracing imperfections. Um, there is somebody here who does typography sketchbook drawing, someone who teaches calligraphy and lettering for Instagram, and you can see she's sold to 14,000 students. Italic script with a brush pen sold to 13,000 people. So definitely loads of opportunity if you have a knack for art, painting, drawing or calligraphy. Now, the last idea that I have, and I would love to expand more on it if you are interested, is to come up with your own NFT, because this is definitely on the trend right now, and you can have great opportunities to make money if you come up with your own NFT. So if that's something that you guys want me to talk more about, then let me know in the comments down below, and I will put it on my list of videos that I will produce next. Now, what if your hobby is traveling? If you love spending time especially outdoors, exploring new places, learning new things, then how can you monetize this? There is absolutely a great idea for you to consider here as well, and we'll try to work with what you have, so to speak. And this is because obviously for the last two years, people have been confined indoors and there have been so many restrictions that now everybody's trying to spend as much time outside in nature, close to national parks, close to beautiful areas and sceneries that they can take all in. There are studies that are showing that rural travel is gaining loads and loads of traction, loads of momentum. In many cases, it is now double compared to the level that it was just a couple of years ago. In the US alone, it used to represent only 10% of people who were traveling, being interested in rural travel, and now it's reaching 21%. But in places like Canada, like Slovenia, like Australia or France, it's getting to 40% of all people who are looking to travel, being interested in rural traveling. So now you're wondering, how can I make money with that? Well, if you already have an RV, or if you're able to rent or buy one secondhand, then there are definitely opportunities for you to consider because on places like Airbnb, you can place it in a location that is close to a national park or simply in the wild, and you can charge a few hundreds, if not a thousand dollars for a week of stay. So on places like Airbnb, if we take a look, there are people renting out their RVs, their camper vans for three, four hundred dollars for a week. You can see this one in Belgium for 400 francs. This one in France, they charge 550 francs, which is about the same in dollars. There are people who charge a bit more in places like uh, Germany, a bit less in places like Italy or France. But as you can see, a few hundred dollars every single week just for hosting people in an RV that you either already have if you love traveling or that you can buy for under $5,000. Now, the alternative to that, if you're not willing to spend 5K on an RV, is to buy a tent. You can buy a tent, a yurt, even luxury ones on AliExpress, they cost $300. You get them set up in similar areas that are beautiful, that are in the middle of nature, that are in the countryside ideally, or close to mountains or a lake, and you can charge sometimes even more than what you can for an RV. Let's take a look. Okay, so just to give you a few examples, we have this tent here that is currently being rented for thousand dollars almost in a place in France. There is another one in Belgium for almost five hundred dollars, one in Germany for 288. There are some in France that are a little bit cheaper, so 200 or 300 in Slovenia, 600 again in France. There is this relatively simple one in France for four hundred dollars, a very nice one in Slovenia for a thousand one hundred and twenty five. So you get the point. If you love traveling and you know these great places where people can come and spend a week, you can set up a tent, set up an RV, put it on Airbnb and let the money come in. Be honest with me. 
Do you spend loads of time in the kitchen coming up with your own recipes or trying out something new? I'm pretty sure you're well loved among your family and friends. That is undoubted. But have you ever thought that you can actually make money with your talent? Now, obviously, a very straightforward way to do that is to sell the yumminess that you produce in the kitchen to your local community. You can go to the farmer's market. You can have a partnership with an existing bakery if you like to bake or with a restaurant. There are other ways that you can monetize this skill. Number one is you can create a TikTok or a YouTube channel. And I know maybe that's not very intuitive, but there are nowadays tons of channels, both on TikTok and YouTube. Sometimes they have hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of followers. And what they do is they share their talent and their passion for baking or cooking with the world. They simply take people through the recipe step by step and they show the result. And loads of people are dying to watch this kind of content. And the way that you make money with this is on YouTube, YouTube will pay you for the views that you're making with your videos. Affiliate marketing, you can advertise products, you can have paid sponsorships where you create content either mentions or dedicated videos for companies that would like you to talk about their product. Loads of opportunity for you to monetize your cooking or baking skills. But wait, I have a couple more. If you want to take this to the next level, you can obviously create your own course. And I want to share my screen again and show you a few examples because my mind was completely blown the other day when I saw this. So if we come back to Domestica, you see here there is a cookie decoration with royal icing for beginners course that was sold to 3,300 people. There are many, many other courses and you can see that for something as simple or maybe not, maybe as sophisticated as cake design, there are 48 thousand students who purchased this course. So needless to say that if you are a passionate baker or cook or chef, then consider coming up with your own course. Another great idea that you can consider is catering for parties, especially for kids' birthday parties that shouldn't be too sophisticated. And there is tons of demand. And then last but not least, probably the best one that I have for you is Airbnb experiences. Either offer a meal that you cook for people who are probably tourists and who can come into your home, you can give them a traditional meal made in your country, in your city, and you can charge per person. Or you can organize both tasting and cooking classes that you can also post and advertise on Airbnb experiences. If we come to Airbnb experiences, you see what I can see around me. So here close to, to my area in Switzerland. So there is this vintage cheese and chocolate workshop that this person charges over a hundred dollars for. There is this eat like a lock local. The food is included about $50 a person. There is this Italian tasting experience on the roof terrace that they charge about 65 for. There is a milk factory tour. There is a simple wine tasting walk and fondue experience. As you can see, it doesn't have to be anything totally out of the ordinary. You can cook what you usually cook. You can offer it on Airbnb experiences and you are good to go. That is a great way to make some side income and maybe later on you can open your own restaurant or you can have a bigger business. Thank you guys so much for watching. If this is the kind of content that you like watching, let me know in the comments down below and make sure you like the video so I know you liked it. And until next time, I recommend you go ahead and watch this video where I talk about the first steps that I would take if I were to start my business all over again. Thank you again and I'll see you next time.